What I want to talk about is social network analysis. Now, most people are familiar with what social networking is, and actually social networking gives rise to some data which we analyse by using social network analysis. Perhaps the easiest way to think about the sort of data we deal with is to think of family trees, an area which most people are familiar with. Uh, if they've not actually looked at their own family tree, they've probably looked at family trees of royal families or, or other important individuals. In these trees, we have got individuals, and we have the connections between the individuals. And those connections represent a relationship. It's the parent of, is the usual one we see in a family tree. And that ends up with a very simple diagram. And social network analysis is about producing those diagrams and analysing those diagrams. Now then, the tr family tree example is very, very simple because, of course, the direction is all in one way and actually there's no loops or interactions between individuals across different bits of the tree. But if we look at other relationships between individuals, that's no longer true. For example, I could look at my friendship network. Who are my friends? How are they connected to each other? And out of that comes a diagram in which the individuals are represented as dots and the relationship is a friend of, is a line that connects the two together. And this ends up with some very, very complex looking patterns. And social network analysis is about how to analyse those patterns. Let me give you a few examples of applications of social network analysis. Let's suppose, for example, that I want to buy the latest technology. Uh, I don't know, an iPad. One of the things that the advertisers will be doing is they're trying to convince me it's something I actually need, it's something that will be useful to me, and I have to worry about whether I've got the resources to actually buy it. But that's probably not enough to make me adopt this new technology. However, if I've got collections of friends that have all got it, telling me what a great device it actually is, then the, the people I know, the influence they have over me, is the sort of things that might make me go out and decide, yes, I must have one of those, all my friends have got those, I'd be rather out of the picture if I haven't got one. So then I go out and buy one. Or well, let's look at a really completely different example. I'm looking for a new job. Very important, I think, at this stage in the economy. Again, my friends might be a good way of me finding a job. In fact, lots of people get jobs through verbal contacts. But actually, the problem with my friends is that they've actually got the same resource information as I've got. They go to the same places I go. They know the same people I know. However, with my social network, I have somebody that I'm not so strongly connected to. And it's actually been shown that those are the people that actually give you access to different resources. So that's where I'm more likely to find a job. So if I know about the networks that I'm involved in, if I can study those networks, then I can understand how these processes work and how they can actually benefit me as an individual. One area that's become far more important in recent times has been the look at criminal networks or terrorist networks, underground networks where people are really trying to hide the relationships between each other. And here at Manchester, we have, within our group, we're actually looking at those kinds of networks, often derived historically, for example, from the suffragette movement or the IRA. But actually, the patterns of things that happen there is exactly the same as is happening today. And so we can learn a lot from what's been happening in the past to how those networks developed to try and map that information onto the networks as we see today. Here at Manchester, we have a centre dedicated to the study of social networks. Uh, the centre is called the Mitchell Centre, and it involves individuals from across different disciplines who all have an interest in social networks. These may be in the applications of networks, people in sociology, people in anthropology, who actually want to find out about the networks as they work in real society. As well as that, there are methodologists, people that are developing techniques for networks, ways of analysing them, ways of visualising them, ways of collecting data. Perhaps our data could be collected by questionnaire, so people want to design questionnaires, so we get people involved in social psychology. Or maybe they're computer scientists who want to collect data that comes off Facebook and other social networking sites such as that. Well, the important thing about the centre at Manchester is that we have all that expertise here in one place. And these people come together in this interdisciplinary unit that we have to look at social networks.